uh, by being entrepreneurial, whether that is in the context of um, your starting a business, whether that's the context of your organization, whether that's the context of a nonprofit. Uh, we have to think entrepreneurially. We have to think about new solutions to some of these problems, whether it's human rights, whether we're talking about the environment. Um, we've got big challenges, right? I think we can all agree on that. In fact, sometimes it gets a little overwhelming sometimes, the challenges that we, we have to face. Um, I am here uh, because I believe that you all are the generation that has the enthusiasm, has the uh, mental capacity to do a lot of this work. And so that's why I'm here uh, trying to help enable you to uh, understand some of the tools that you can use um, instead of working at uh, some other company or something like that. And uh, I have with me a, a young gentleman uh, that has uh, joined me. I met him on his podcast, the Customer Discovery uh, Podcast. And um, I would, uh, uh, Ethan, are you there? Can you hear us all right? Sounds Thank you, good. Ethan, for, for joining us today. Um, last we talked uh, was probably a, maybe a year ago. I can't really remember. Um, <laughs> that uh, long, huh? stuff is. <laughs> Yeah, it's really kind of messed up my timeline. Uh, maybe it wasn't that long. Maybe it was just six months ago. I think so. Um, but a lot, has, a lot has happened uh, with you since. Um, and uh, I have here a group of undergraduate students that are uh, probably mainly uh, juniors. And they are uh, getting ready to go to job fairs. We've got one gentleman that's very sharply dressed, I must say. Uh, and uh, um, ready to uh, uh, impress everybody at the job fairs. And uh, um, we've been talking a little bit about innovation. We've been talking about competition. And now we're starting to get into this idea of how do we, how do we test our ideas. And so maybe you might uh, tell us a little bit about your background in this area. And I'm going to turn the camera around and go sit with the students. Sure thing. Uh, good morning, everybody. I think it's a little bit earlier uh, where you're at and then for me. So thank you for making the time. Um, and just to clarify, did you want my background in terms of like uh, through the lens of the business or like professional background or like? Yeah, that'd be great. Here? That'd be great. Yeah. Sure. Um, well, I was a kinesiology major in, in college and now I'm in the tech, uh, tech field. And that kind of summarizes a lot about how I feel about college. It's 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 a place to where you're free to like figure out exactly what you want to do, but you probably won't figure it out until you graduate and go about doing what you assume is best for you. Right. <laughs> and then, bless you. And then the the main thing is like, you know, I got through kinesiology. I, I became a personal trainer out of college and I started my own business. But with the money I, I received from graduation, I started a, a mobile app. Right. It was, a mo it was like a pocket coach for personal training. And that got me in touch with Barbara Corcoran. I was on the, you know, the, her podcast. She has like a Shark Tank sponsored podcast. Um, that app was called Panacea Fit. It was to help train people with medical conditions. And I spent like the $3,000 or what have you I received in graduation money, spent it all on that. And it was almost, a, it wasn't a failure. It definitely didn't take off. You know, it didn't get investment or anything. But it did teach me exactly what I wanted to do. Like I loved helping people. And, you know, personal training was definitely a vehicle for growth there. But I started to realize that I, I love technology. Like, it, it's so exciting how you can start like this software platform and it can get in touch with thousands of people, sometimes millions of people. And even though it's a simple functioning value proposition, like we connect um, students to professors who want to help them get a job, for example, it could be that simple, but it can change lives. Kind of like Handshake, if you guys are looking for internships, um, it connects basically people like you to employers like myself, and we could do like paid internships um, and things like that for college credits if it's not paid. Uh, it, it's it's amazing what technology could do. It really does connect people regardless of where you're at. We're starting to see that with COVID as well. So I transitioned into uh, kind of unexpectedly COVID um, while I was in Manhattan. COVID kind of like shut that down. I was working as a product manager in Manhattan for a fitness startup. When COVID hit, it hit New York really hard. So I lost my apartment, uh, kind of packed up everything, moved back to Virginia. And I was like, man, what do I do? Getting a job back then was so difficult. And hopefully it's, it's not the same for you guys now. I don't think it is, actually. It's like the best job market in a very long time. So you guys are graduating at the right time or going to a job fair at the right time. But 
I basically decided like, since I can't get a job that I want, I'm going to instead start my own business. So I started customer, well, marketpain.co, which was a platform for software developers to post their, their apps and get equity from people or get funding from equity that um, like users, potential users, they would give them funding, they would get equity and they could like build it together. Right. That didn't work. Uh, do you guys know what Robinhood is? <laughs> the trading app, right? <clears throat> Everyone knows what Robinhood is. The analogy that our mentors and potential investors told us like in a, a mock accelerator was like, it took Robinhood three years just to get their initial product off the market because they had to get partnerships with Citadel. They had to apply with the SEC. And we see it's still very difficult for them, even though they're successful and they're, they've IPO'd as well. So I wasn't willing to do that. I needed money. So basically, we started a, a platform that connected founders like myself to potential early adopters for idea validation and product iteration. And in doing so, we started to get paid. Like people literally offered us like Stanford graduates that had like this a little website. They wanted to get in touch with podcast hosts. They were like, I'll pay you $1,000 to get me 30 early adopters. And we we're like, okay, hired a guy to do that. And, and, you know, we did early adopter recruitment. And then bigger startups would say, hey, I'll pay you to come in. Like, I'll pay you, you know, $6,000 a month, what have you, to come in and do all of our customer discovery, which is basically like validating new feature sets, figuring out how you like the platform that you're using. Say, if you're using TikTok, right? Like they do research all the time. They're like, how are you liking this video? Like, uh, you know, is it easy to create a TikTok video for you? Or is that stopping you from creating more content? Like that's customer discovery, right? So that kind of snowballed. And then sooner or later, like, you know, I had a team of almost 20 and, you know, we're still bootstrapping, but now we're raising a million dollars. But really and truly it was just through asking people like, hey, is this valuable for you? Okay, what would you like to see added to the platform? And then we just built from there. <laughs> Hope I didn't ramble why too much. That brings us to where so, we're at. Uh, tell, us, tell us a little bit about why it's so important to uh, even have like maybe or why you'd even want like a third party to be interacting with your customers, to be uh, talking with these quote unquote early adopters. Um, why is that an important thing for business to do? Because, you know, after all, I've got brilliant ideas. Why do I need to talk to customers <laughs> when I've got brilliant ideas? Yeah. Well, the main thing is there's no such thing as facts within the, in the building. So if we're just brainstorming about like, hey, let's build this thing and we think it's going to be the greatest thing ever, that's all an assumption, right? We need to convert that into a falsifiable hypothesis and we need to go speak to those people and say like, hey, yeah, this is something that they're going to pay for. People are willing to hop in cars with strangers and drive, you know, for a $10 a trip, for example, Uber. People are willing to stay in a stranger's home in Puerto Rico for 12 days for a thousand dollars, for example, and you go out, you validate that that's Airbnb, right? They're all major uh, components of customer discovery. You need to validate your idea. You need to validate your solution and your problem space, who it's for. And then you need to validate your business model from there. So customer discovery is at the center of all of that. And that's where we come in. We want to build a platform that basically connects the people with these ideas to the people that the idea helps and help them validate every stage of their business. If that makes sense. You talked about early adopters, and we haven't really talked about all these terms that we're going to do that later today. Um, but there's uh, also what we call an early majority and a late majority as far as adopting the technology. How do we know that those early adopters you're talking to are going to be like the people that are going to buy your product when it's Best Buy or something like that? That is beautifully put. So the amazing thing about what you just mentioned, it, you're mentioning crossing the chasm, right? It's a, I think it's called a bell diagram. And at the far left, you have innovators and early adopters towards the more center of this bell diagram where it's most of the people, early majority, late majority, and then laggards. Laggards are like people like my dad who will not stand in line for an iPhone, but he'll take an old Samsung G, G whatever, right? <laughs> you know? And then you have people like me who will stand in, in line for an iPhone and buy anything Apple creates because I just love new and exciting technology, right? So, you know, that that probably splits you guys down in, in a percentage of people who want new and exciting technology or just want to try new and exciting things. And people are like, I'll wait for it to get tested and then I'll, I'll you know, I'll, I'll receive it as a gift, you know, for example, for Christmas or something. So our assumption was that how do we find how do we decipher who's an early adopter or not? And it's basically willing to do the first interview for free. So when we do all of our outreach, we can craft messaging and there's going to be people who are like 
gig workers who are like, I'll do this if I get paid $10 for the interview. And there's people who are like, hey, I just want to try this software. Can I get it for free? Can I like just give the guy feedback? Like, I, I love this stuff. Like there's this um, company or this startup, this founder <clears throat> who uses AI to write website content for you. I used it for my website and I was like, this is crazy. It's called GPT-3 AI. Like that's the plugin he uses. Elon Musk has funded it. And I think Microsoft has actually bought it, but um, not his startup, it, the, the technology he leverages. And it's so accurate, the website content it writes. We brought on another founder, a startup or um, a software developer who basically creates websites. He's like, I just want to check this out. I just want to meet him. I just want to get feedback on the site. I think he's on to something great. That is an early adopter. However, if he said, hey, I'll do it, I guess, you know, I'm not too excited about it. But if, you know, I get paid $15 for a 20 minute interview, I'll do it. He's probably in the late majority, right? So that's how we decipher based on the first interview. Does that make sense? Nice, nice. That's great. That's fantastic. So um, you figured out that uh, people are going to pay for helping uh, helping them figure out who their adopters are and their customers are. Tell us about your business now. What, where, what's your pathway? Where are you at? Why you said you're raising a million dollars. Yep. So for our business model, traction doesn't necessarily come in with just revenue. But somehow we've really bootstrapped revenue a lot further than I thought. We went from me living in my <laughs> parents' house, starting this business, to now we're approaching $30,000 a month um, in revenue. And we have a clear path to 100 k per month. So now as we raise, and we're raising $1 million through VCs and angels, we're actively leveraging that revenue to show like, uh, basically when you receive, receive seed funding, you receive seed funding to get to $1 million a year in revenue. So if we're able to demonstrate a clear path to that, because we're, what is it, a third of the way there? I'm not actually that good at math. Um, we're in a perfect place to raise money, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> well, you said you're uh, not good at math, um, uh, but uh, does a founder have to do everything? Or do you, uh, how do you, you said you have a team of people, how does that work? Well, at first, I, I, kind of did have to do everything. But then I realized like there was a lot of people in the same situation as me, uh, given the times it was COVID, right? So there was a lot of people who were transitioning into the tech industry. There were a lot of people who had just lost their jobs. So what I did was I looked for people who had just graduated from boot camps, from like UX design, software development, what have you, because the job market back then was the worst since uh, the Great Depression, actually. Like, uh, I think it was between March, April, I think it was April to like January. Like that's how bad the job market was. And now it's a lot better. So basically it was me and like an army of interns. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend doing this by the way, but you know, are you, some bets paid off a, a lot. Like, you know, the US designers were fantastic. The software developers, it, they were a little bit too new to really jump in and create a website for the first time. So we decided like, no, we need to hire professional software developers. And I couldn't speak that language as much as well. Uh, but then slowly but surely, like, you know, you just conduct experiments and just like with customer discovery, you validate certain things, you make mistakes and you have to put out fires. Like last night I had to put out, you know, a fire because we need a, a new UX designer. As we grow quickly, people need to be assigned to contracts and then, you know, the workload expands, people are at capacity and now you have to bring on new people. We have to go through Upwork or, you know, we can go through uh, angel lists, but you got to hire within 48 hours, right? Like I have to do that. I, I can't just put someone on that. So um, the founders should do, I think, three things, preserve the culture, cast the vision for the business, and perform the one to three key actions that help improve the bottom line. And for me, it's fundraising, and it's overseeing a sales process. But then you could also do service delivery, you have to do accounting, you have to do taxes, you have to, <laughs> you know, I, I, you can do as much as you want, but really find out what you're best at and just do those things and then hire out if you can. It's interesting here at the NU, we have a number of researchers that have invented some interesting things, um, but they keep, they invent them because they're interested in doing research, right? So they never ever get to the sale. And I have a friend of mine that says, Nothing matters until a sale is made. That's the purest form of validation. That's right. Yeah. And that's one of our packages is actually titled exactly that for that reason. So there are software developers that just want to do research and just want to understand like, hey, is this something that people want? 
And we have a package to demonstrate like, hey, this is research driven sales. You're going to get this person on the call with you. They're going to try out your platform, but you, you can sell to them, right? <laughs> They've already demonstrated that this is valuable to them. Go ahead, ask them. Ask them if this is something they're willing to pay for. If they say no, ask why. Don't just say, oh, okay, that hurt my feelings. I'm gone. Ask them why and try to ask them why about five, six times because you'll get to the root cause of, of that no. <laughs> and if they pay, great. You know, nice. You're welcome. <laughs> well, uh, why does it take that many questions? Why don't they just tell you right off the bat? Because for what there is something, uh, not confirmation bias. There's, there's a name for it to where people aren't willing to show you the real them. If, if, if you will, right away, it takes a little while for them to really dive deeper into like why they don't want to use something. And it really does depend on the product and the space that you're in. Um, I can't come up with any examples off the bat. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I would have to prepare like a case study there because there, there's so many examples I can go back into because I learned that in my personal training days, right? That's something I can use as an example. Uh, there's something called like finding the why and you have to uh, basically ask five or six times to peel back the onion because if someone says they want to get in shape uh, because I want to look good at the beach, why is that? Uh, because you know my, my parents were never in shape and I, I didn't grow up being healthy um and why does that affect you um well because i was picked on in school and why does that affect you because you know i want to find the love of my life and you know i haven't dated it in a while like it, it really does get that deep and they would say like go until the tears start flowing and then you start to understand here's why this person is really trying to get in shape because they were doubted their entire life and now they want to take back control of their life same thing happens with products but not as deep i would say all right um, no, that's an excellent explanation. I think, you know, the other part too is you just don't, uh, um, and I do this too. Somebody uh, just asks me casually what I think about something. I'll often just say, oh, that's great. Because I don't want to invest the, the emotional energy into really giving criticism because they might, might not like it. I don't know that yep. they will take it by the so. Yeah, why is that great? Yeah. Let me know, Scott. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Open up a little bit. <laughs> Great. Well, um, uh, I don't want. I know that as a startup founder, you got lots going on, so I don't want to take up uh, all your time here. This has been a great um, kind of insight into your questions. Or, you know, uh, so you got your. Uh, I posted your contact information so they can uh, connect with you on LinkedIn or something like that if you have a, uh, a question. But um, what's uh, yeah? What I want to know what's. Uh, uh, in the in store view, because when we when we last talked, we were talking about AI and we we're talking about its use in customer discovery and understanding personality profiles and stuff like that. But you know, what's the what do you think the next year has in store? Yeah, you know, that's I I love artificial intelligence. It's terrifying, but it's like a exciting, terrifying, right? And the main reason why we want to raise is because we need to build our marketplace and we need people like you as well, because there's a lot more startups for like ed tech and for students and, and like helping you with your like college is tough, right? Like I, I know this class, you have a great professor, but maybe some of the, the homework or the quizzes and, and whatnot are challenging. And, you know, maybe there's tools that help you like stay ahead of homework um, or, or tests. We need people like you to build up the marketplace. And the more we build up the marketplace, the more data from customer discovery interviews we have. And that's why we're raising because we want to build a predictive validation analytics framework. So we use that data to, it's, it's kind of boring stuff. Linear regression is like the hello world of artificial intelligence. But once you have that data, you can train a computer to basically say, this is 90% validated. This is 40% validated. No one wants this, quit it. You know, like, don't waste any more money, dude. Like, you know, try something new. But if you're close to like 85 to 90% certainty, that's pretty much a green light you can present to investors and raise money. That's enabling people to like follow their dreams. And I think with more people now transitioning into like, um, not necessarily startup founders, but business owners, that goes a long way if we're able to create that. So you're able to create, we've uh, looked at AI and we've learned that we can uh, train an AI and then we can predict what's going to happen in the future. And basically you're, if I understand what you're saying, is you're able to train this AI uh, and then feed in the data from my business and they'll say, okay, Scott, you know, uh, 
you know, it, it's looking pretty good here, you know, probably with some tweaks, probably with some more experiments, you might be able to figure this out. Uh, or, yeah, this is really stupid. Why don't you go do something else? Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and while people don't want to hear that, it, like I've invested over $50,000 back into this business. If it were to not work, I would want to know that before the $5,000 mark, of course, wouldn't you? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, excellent. Uh, well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. So, and, uh, you know, as per, as per always, reach out if uh, there's any way I can return the favor or if I can uh, uh, help you out. Um, I would be, uh, we'll, we'll love to see where your career goes. Sure thing. Thank you so much. And you guys have a great one. Good luck at the job. Bye, guys. Bye.